Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Brandon here of Turning Point Embassy in Austin, Texas. I just wanted to come on here real quick and address a certain particular video that Minister Alan Parr has uh, put out there. Now, if you're watching this, of course, I want you to subscribe and share as you come on live or as you come on and watch this video. But uh, this is, let me set this as my disclaimer. I am not here to try and uh, clout chase. This is not about trying to bash or strive against uh, another religious leader or pastoral leader. I think that Alan Parr is particularly a phenomenal teacher, a great teacher, but there are some things that just mm, are hit and miss with me. Uh, me, myself, being uh, having a master's in Christian education and having a background in uh, pastoralship and Christian education, um, my thing is teaching people and edifying them and educating them in the things of God, scripturally based, spirit-filled. Um, I also work, um, I've seen the Spirit of God move through me to do healings, to do, uh, I've seen people come out of cast, I've seen people people who have stroke, strokes uh, come out of casts, um, off of wheelchairs, out of crutches. I've seen a lot of miracles, things, miraculous things that God has worked through me, uh, not even just me, but in my own life or in other people's lives as well. But I wanted to address this particular uh, video that he recently posted about Bethel Music's lyrics. Now, uh, you know, again, this is not the bash Alan Parr. I think that his teaching is, uh, you know, uh, very good. But there are some things that I feel as though for the sake of him having content that he reaches a little bit too far. And, uh, you know, I watch some of his videos. You know, I'm not a big follower, but, you know, respectfully, I just think that a lot of his content is pushed out there for the sake of his YouTube channel and just having something to put out there as far as content goes. And so I wanted to address one of his particular videos when it talks about Bethel Music lyrics should you be listening to Bethel music's lyrics and he's addressing one uh, one um, music or song that Bethel has put out called champion and really he's addressing one particular stint of lyric or verse about it and I wanted to give my my take on that to help somebody who may not be as edified or educated in the things of God to help you understand what I believe he was trying to convey, at least this is what I'm hoping uh, for the sake of his teaching. But he's addressing Bethel's lyrics in the, in the song uh, Champion. Um, one of the things that states or that they state in the song is that when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Yes, I do. Jesus has given me. When I open my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority Jesus has given me. Now, on his video, he'll pause and stop the video. Um, you'll see here. It was authentic. It was heartfelt. It was literally everything that you would want a worship service to be. And as a worshiper, I was fully engaged in this worship experience. That is until I heard this one song being sung during the worship service and it literally just messed up the entire worship service for me. And to my surprise, I looked around whenever I heard these lyrics being sung in this worship song and I looked around and I was shocked that I did not see more Christians stopping in their tracks like, wait, hold up, this song is unbiblical. It's not theologically accurate, but no, I saw a room full of people lifting their hands and praising God and continuing in the worship as if nothing had ever changed. Now, he pauses and stops the video to address these lyrics and then gives his sort of opinion about the lyrics being kind of what he calls God-centered or man-centered gospel. Um, now, one thing I can agree with on this particular, on his particular video is that we, if he says, if we, if we won't listen to theological inaccurate sermons, we should do the same when it comes to worship music. Now that I can definitely agree with. I do believe that if you're not going to listen to somebody who's not theologically astute or savvy, uh, they're not studied in the word of God, then we should be able to apply that morality into our worship music. I do believe that our worship music is very, very vital and very critical uh, when it comes to encountering God and encountering an atmosphere and feeling Jesus, as we say. Uh, but I do not agree with uh, this man-centered gospel that he's labeling the song with or that he's labeling the song to be associated with. Yeah. All right. It says this, when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Wait, wait, wait. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. What walls are we talking about, right? So now we have the power to shout or lift our voice. And all of a sudden, whenever we do that, 
we have the power to make walls fall. Okay, but then it gets worse. It says, I have the authority Jesus has given me. Okay, I'm good with that. Christians, we do have a certain level of authority. I got that. Okay, I'm good with that. Now let's keep going. When I open my mouth, miracles start breaking out. Stop, stop, stop. When I heard these lyrics being sung in this particular conference, it says here, when I open my mouth, miracles start breaking out. You see, this is the problem with some of the music today. It is promoting a man-centered gospel. It is slowly trying to slide in there this little God's theology, this word faith theology that says that, you know what? Because God created the world in seven days and he created it using his words. And if we are created in the image of God, then therefore we also have the power to create things with our words. We're also able to speak things into existence. And so because God is able to open his mouth and he is able to perform miracles, then therefore we have the same authority because Jesus gave us the authority. And therefore, whenever I open my mouth, miracles can happen. When I heard these now, I understand the idea, but I do disagree with the context that he's bringing from it, um, especially as it relates to this worship song in particular. Now, we are not ourselves God, right? In the sense that it is our power and also in the sense that uh, it is our own efforts that exude the power of God. We're not looking within ourselves as sort of this man-centered gospel or this what we call new age centered gospel where I can think a thing and it just happened. Now, I'm, I'm totally against the new age prospect and the new age theology and all of that stuff because it, it, it sort of sidebars and detracts and digresses against having a personal relationship with God. Now, I do stand firm on that. In order for anything godly to exact or exude into this earth, you do need to have that relationship with God. Jesus said in one of his scriptures in a parable, he said, many in those days will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we do all, do, do all of these things, these miraculous works in your name? And he says, get away with away from me, you wicked servants, for I never knew you. So I do believe that you have to have that particular relationship with God and a relationship with Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'll get to that at the end of this message, because he has a number of, 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 of teachings on a believer not having the Holy Spirit or a believer not uh, speaking in tongues and all of these other different as aspects that he does not biblically uh, 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 um, relate to or, or say that they should have. Now, I'm a firm believer. I believe that every Christian should and has the power and the ability to, to, to have the Spirit of God within them. They can speak in tongues. They can cast out devils. They can. Now, there is a measure to which all of those can work, or there is a measure that Paul has written to us that says there is a measure according to the faith that you have to believe to do these certain works. There's also a plethora of scripture that Jesus says within, within himself that he gave power to the disciples to do those works, and even greater powers or works shall we do because he goes unto the Father. So all these things that we saw Jesus do, we have the power to do as well, according to the Spirit of God that works within us. Now, there's also a plethora of scripture that I'm going to give you to help you and solidify my claim on my opinion, um, but I wanted to state that as my basis and as the groundwork. I do, however, subscribe to the idea that believers aren't just believing for their salvation, but to some, and if not more than most, Believers have the power of God within them, um, not of their own accord, but of the Spirit of God that works within them, okay? And I'm going to give you scripture for this. I know Alan Parr is a very big scripture, a biblically based scripture junkie, so am I. I believe in the power of the Bible, the power of the Word of God. It is the absolute thing that we need in order for us to live a good, more righteous life. Um, so I do believe that the power of the Word of God is there. Now, Minister Parr's idea is that believers do not possess the power to do so or possess the power in their mouth to perform the miraculous. At least that's what I'm picking up on this video that he just put out um, as he's piggybacking off of or picking apart the context of this particular song. When I heard these lyrics being sung in this particular conference, it says here, when I open my mouth, miracles start breaking out. You see, this is the problem with some of the music today. 
it is promoting a man-centered gospel. It is slowly trying to slide in there this little God's theology, this word faith theology that says that, you know what, because God created the world in seven days and he created it using his words. And if we are created in the image of God, then therefore we also have the power to create things with our words. We're also able to speak things into existence. And so because God is able to open his mouth and he is able to perform miracles, then therefore we have the same authority because Jesus gave us the authority. And therefore, whenever I open my mouth, miracles can happen. When I heard the... So what he is trying to establish or what he's trying to state, what I believe, is that believers do not have or possess the power of having miracles within their mouths or when they open their mouths the, mir the miraculous as the song says as I open my mouth the miraculous starts to happen I'm a big believer in this come on now listen he also has a stance about believers not speaking in tongues or being spirit filled for that matter that's another subject that I may get onto at a later date but I want to give you a plethora of scriptures that fit this context but requires a bit deeper cert a research and study now again I said I'm a master's in Christian education so I, I love to study the Word of God. Um, and so I want to just start here and I've got there's a, a mid a, a tyranny of or a myriad of different scriptures that can back up my claim, my theological claim that this is actually a the believer has the power to uh, uh, speak miracles and to do things and to do the works of God through his mouth and through him. okay Now again, not saying that you are God. It is saying that God works through you, and as you believe, the miracles come out of your mouth. Amen? So let's look at, I want to just give you the background of this Joshua, uh, Joshua 6 and 5, actually starting at the fourth verse, Joshua 6 and 4, and you'll also see it up on your screen. It says, take along the sacred chest and tell the seven priests to walk in front of it carrying trumpets. But on the seventh day, march slowly around the town seven times while the priests blow their trumpets. Then the priests, watch this, will blast on their trumpets and everyone else will shout. In order to shout, you have to open your mouth, Okay. The, uh, the wall will fall down and your soldiers can go straight in from every side. Now, I'm reading out of the CEVDCI uh, translation. I just like it because you can understand it a lot uh, clearer. Now, this was a command of the Lord to open your mouth and to speak and to shout. And at the sound of their voice, notice now, if you even read from one through four, it speaks specifically that God is telling you them, the people of Israel at that time, to open their mouths and shout, to open their mouths and say something. And at the sound of their voice, the walls would come crumbling down. Now, at that theological understanding and revelation, what we see here is God reveals uh, potential. Whenever you see the command of God in Scripture, the command of God is actually revealing your potential. Okay? God's not going to put more on you than you can bear, and he's not going to tell you to do something that you don't possess the power to do. And l listen, we look at it like this. Look at it like this. God is the resource, or God is the source. Excuse me. God is the source. We are the cause. Okay? God, he, watch this. Even in the very beginning when he created Adam, it said that he had not caused the rain or the, 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 the plants to bud because he did not have a man to till the ground. Well, what was the point of the man? The man was the cause of tilling the ground of what God had already planted. So without man, there was no miracle of bringing forth the verb or the, the, the uh, foliage, the, the plants, the trees and everything. Man was a manager of that. So how is it that Alan Parr believes that we don't possess that power to exude the miraculous for God to do. Again, it's not about our own efforts. We know this in Zechariah 4 and 6. It's not by power, not by might, but by His Spirit, right? Now unto Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the Spirit that works within us. It is God in us. Let me give you another plethora of Scripture. Look at Genesis 1.26. And of course, this is the beginning where He created man in the image and the likeness of God, right? Genesis 1.26, the image that we were created in as God, it speaks to who we are. We are spiritual beings living in a natural realm, but the likeness speaks to what we can do, okay? Image speaks to who we are, likeness speaks to what we can do. Now listen here, in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, now I know a lot of us love to shout this scripture, but let's look at this uh, deductively, right? Deuteronomy 8 and 18 says, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you 
power to get wealth. That word get in the Hebrew is the word asah, A-S-A-H. You can find that in Strong's uh, Lexicon and Concordance, number 6213. I always like to be theologically accurate. I don't like to just throw a bunch of Hebrew words, Greek words at you without giving you uh, where you can find this information. Strong's uh, Concordance 6213 is the word asah, which is the word here for get, which actually means to create. It means to force, and it means that God has given you the ability. Now, what's funny about this particular scripture is that it's the same word that's also used all throughout Genesis 1 when God was creating the world. Alan Parr dismisses or dejects this idea that man cannot create. Now, now I I understand his theological stance, right? It is not us. We are not the new age. We are not the power. We are not the source of anything being created. We're simply the cause, okay? So we do have power. God has given us a power, an authority. The power is he himself, that dwells within you and the more faith and belief and the more that you yield to that power, the more that he can use you and the more that he moves through you. Alan Parr digresses against this type of uh, theological uh, stance or understanding, okay? So the word used, Asa, the word get, which also means create, which is also found all throughout Genesis, is actually the same word that he uses in his uh, when he speaks out and he's declaring and he's creating the world through he, what he is saying, okay? Now, there's a plethora of scripture that I want to give you to understand fully what this context of the song is actually referring to. The song is referring to that we have the power. When I open my mouth, I'm believing that the Lord God who dwells on the inside of me works through me and through the sound of my voice, I can command a thing. I can create a thing. I can do certain things. I have a certain power and authority over the supernatural world that will affect my natural world because I open my mouth to do the same thing that Jesus did. Here's scripture. Luke 10, 19 says, I have given you, Jesus is talking to his disciples, are we not disciples of God? Okay. Luke 10, 19, I have given you the power to trample on snakes and scorpions and to defeat the power of your enemy, Satan. Nothing can harm you. There's a plethora of other scriptures that denote this. So if we are disciples of Christ, we can have that same power that is over the enemy. We can cast out a devil. Don't believe me? Look at the scripture. Now I want to set this also as my my discord as, as well. The idea is not in our efforts that we exude this power, but our belief that God works through us. I cannot state that enough. It's not turning our attention to us, as Alan Parr would say, but as the source, but uh, but to the source, recognizing that we are a cause or a vessel that God works through. That's what Luke 10, 19 is referring to. And quite frankly, the the basis and the synopsis of all the scripture that I'm going to give you is based on that synopsis, that we're looking towards God as the source, but we are the cause or the vessel that God works through. 1 John 4 and 4 also states this, that you are of God, little children, and have overcome them, talking about the power of the enemy, because he who is in you, is greater than he who is in the world. So in other words, the God, that God that dwells within you, Jesus Christ's power that works within you through his spirit, which is still God, works within us greater than the powers of the works of the world that we see. Okay, that's 1 John 4 and 4. Let's look at John 14 and 12. It says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. Okay, and greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Now, what are those greater works? Well, I'm pretty sure in first century Christianity, Jesus wasn't thinking, well, of course he was thinking, but the disciples weren't thinking about uh, social media. They weren't thinking about all the technological advancements that we have now to get the gospel around the world. You are watching this, you're probably, I've had, uh, I've preached uh, a word through uh, social media streams, and it's reached all the way to Ghana. It's reached to Australia. It's reached to Canada. It's reached to various places around the world. They couldn't do that back then in Jesus's times, or in first century Rome, first century Jerusalem. They couldn't have all the advantages that we have here now today. Those are greater works, right? It's a work that allows us to continue on the gospel in a way that if we don't have the ability to land or put boots on the ground in the bush of Uganda or in the furthest regions of the world, we have technology that can reach around the world much greater and much faster and much further than we could do having a traveling expense. So watch this. And we also have Mark 16 and 17. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe. 
in my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. It goes on to say that they will drink any deadly poison, handle deadly snakes. Now, I'm not one who's going to pick up a deadly snake just for the sole sake of proving my faith. But it also says that we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These are powers. These are authorities. These are miraculous works that Christ has allowed us and endowed us to through his spirit to be able to work out, to be able to do, to be able to exude into the realm of the earth. Okay. These are powers that Christ has given us. Listen, Mark 11, 22, 24. I'm a big scripture, like just like Alan Parr says, that there's no scriptural base for this uh, Bethel music lyric. Mark 11, 22, 24 says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. A lot of these scriptures are based on your belief in God, your faith in God, and the belief that you have the ability to do what God and Christ has already said that you can do, okay? Watch this. For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart but once again here's that word believes that those things he says will be done he will have whatever he says you have to say something you have to move your mouth or open your mouth just like Bethel music lyrics just says that I have the power in my mouth to move things or to see the miraculous therefore I say to you whatever things you ask when you pray believe that you receive them and you will have them now let me set this also as a dis as a disclaimer God is not up in heaven writing blank checks to do the miraculous okay it's according to his will it's according to his will and his desire to see his will done here on earth he's not just writing blank checks that whatever you pray for is just going to happen right there are certain things that God is like listen I see the blessing in that I see that if you do this or if this miracle this miracle breaks through how it's going to help other people but there are certain things that he's going to hold off on because listen I don't want my name attached to you playing the lottery I don't want my name attached to you doing all these different things that don't necessarily promote me they just promote your own desires okay so let's you know you have to be very wise and use wisdom and have your critical thinking and deductively reason the revelation that God is giving you through his scriptures okay another scripture for you Mr. Alan Parr Matthew 10 and 1 it says and when he had called his 12 disciples to him he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases now why would he waste time giving power if you weren't going to walk in that power to do the same acts and things that christ has done there's no point in having power there's no point in doing the miraculous or moving forward in the miracles of god and exuding the miracles of god if you're not going to repeat the same things that jesus did while he was here on earth he wants you to promote and continue to exude the power that he was walking in when he was here on earth by his spirit that dwells within you okay now Bethel lyrics is trying to exude that same power and trying to give us to or get us to a place of worship where we can believe that now I'm I'm all about you know I I get his stance and your idea about you know being emotionalized and 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 moved to what I call euphoric inactivity where you're emotionalized in church but you do nothing outside of those four walls or you're just emotionalized to the point where you just you you feel it but the moment you don't feel it God's not working but the reality is you need those emotions emotions do play a very intricate part in your belief you don't move on what you don't believe right okay so emotions are there to help influence the belief that you have if you don't feel it then how can you exude it okay so you need emotions okay listen look at Philippians 2 12 through 12 and 13 says therefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure now this statement implies a need to live out which means to practice to demonstrate and to exhibit the salvation which believers have in Christ that includes the miraculous works of God speaking out a thing and watching something manifest or watching something come to fruition because you're speaking out the word of God because you have the word of God in you therefore you are watching and you are seeing the miraculous come as you're speaking out the 
things of the will of God because you're the cause of it happening. He wants to work through you. Paul is writing here to the people of Philippi because he wants them to work out their own salvation. In other words, I want you to exhibit. I want you to exude. I want you to do the things that you saw Christ doing. Continue to demonstrate that so that other believers or non-believers for that matter will be uh, uh, more prone to coming into the salvation and glory of God because they see the miracles that are working. Okay, so watch this. I'm going to close with this. James 1 and 17, it says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. So in other words, what James is trying to help us understand is that if there are good gifts, that gift being whether it's speaking in tongues, whether it's walking in miracles, whether it's raising the dead, whether it's speaking out a thing, whether it's all of these different powers and authorities that Christ has given you the power and authority to walk in. My question to you is, if it's a good and perfect gift, why wouldn't you want it? (laughs) If it's to exude and bring glory to God, why wouldn't you want it? Now, I do set this as my disclaimer as well. We don't use these gifts for our own glorifications or to walk walk around in egotistical uh, mindsets where we believe it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Listen, it is the power of God that works within you. And if God wants to give you the spiritual gift of walking in miracles, if God wants to give you the spiritual gift of prophesying, if God wants to give you the spiritual gift of of, of laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover, if God wants to give you the gift of speaking in tongues, and if they're good and they're perfect gifts that come from above, from the Father of lights, the Father of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth, why wouldn't you want that? Listen, chew on that. I'm Pastor Brandon of Turning Point Embassy. Coming at you, Alan Parr. I want to hear from you. All right. It says this. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Wait, wait, wait. When I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. What walls are we talking about? Right? So now we have the power to shout or lift our voice. And all of a sudden, whenever we do that, we have the power to make walls fall. Okay. But then it gets worse. It says... I have the authority Jesus has given me. Okay, I'm good with that. Christians, we do have a certain level of authority. I got that. Okay, I'm good with that. Now let's keep going. When I open my mouth, miracles start breaking out. Stop, stop, stop. When I heard these lyrics being sung in this particular conference, it says here, when I open my mouth, miracles start breaking out. You see, this is the problem with some of the music today. It is promoting a man-centered gospel. It is slowly trying to slide in there this little God's theology, this word faith theology that says that, you know what? Because God created the world in seven days and he created it using his words. And if we are created in the image of God, then therefore we also have the power to create things with our words. We're also able to speak things into existence. And so because God is able to open his mouth and he is able to perform miracles, then therefore we have the same authority because Jesus gave us the authority. And therefore, whenever I open my mouth, miracles can happen. When I heard these 